Welcome to Mrs. Anderson's Nutrition and the next episode of the Nutrition Through the Ages series. In this video, we will look at the nutrition needs of young adults, ages 19 to 30. Young adulthood is often considered the time when our bodies are in their best condition. All organs and systems are fully developed. Energy intake is no longer solely focused on supporting a body's growth and development. And our bodies require the least amount of maintenance in regard to strength, weight gain, loss, musculature, and aerobic capacity when compared to other stages of adult life. And as noted many times throughout this series, an adequate and varied diet will support health and overall quality of life without having to do much else. Macronutrients are the nutrients the body requires in large amounts, and they are exactly what make up our total caloric intake. Carbs are our brain's primary source of energy, and we need about 45 to 65% of our total food intake to come from carbs. Complex carbs like whole grains, veggies, lentils, beans, and nutrient-rich simple carbs like fruits are beneficial. Fats are needed to support brain functions. Fats also help cushion and insulate the body, and fats are needed to absorb some vitamins like A, D, E, and K. We need about 25 to 35 percent of our total food intake to come from fats. Avocados, peanut butter, nuts, oils, seeds, and fish are all good sources of fats. Protein is needed to repair the cells in our bodies and to make new ones. We need about 10 to 35 percent of our total daily food intake to come from protein. Whole grains, lentils, beans, eggs, nut butters, fish, dairy, and meats are all good sources of protein. Now, calories are not a macronutrient, but are definitely worth mentioning here as they are the fuel our body uses to survive. Calorie needs can be determined by listening to your body's hunger and satiety cues. Take caution with fasting and very low calorie programs as most are just restriction practices in disguise. Micronutrients are the nutrients our bodies require in smaller amounts. They are just as essential as our macronutrients. Young adult women are at increased risk for micronutrient deficiencies due to higher requirements as they transition into childbearing years and also due to a tendency to avoid some food groups. B12 is needed to convert food into energy and for DNA synthesis. Vegans and sometimes vegetarians are susceptible to this deficiency. Folate is essential for the prevention of birth defects. Adequate amounts when capable of becoming pregnant is just as important as during the first trimester. Eat basically all of the green stuff plus some enriched grains. Vitamin D is needed for bone health and hormone production. Vitamin D needs fat to be absorbed and it can be a common deficiency in young adulthood. Iron is needed for energy production and young women may experience deficiency with menstruation. Lastly, fiber is not a micronutrient, but it does do a number of things for our body, depending on the type. Soluble fiber dissolves in water, and this means it slows our digestion, allowing nutrients to be absorbed. It also helps push food through our intestines. Insoluble fiber can't be digested, so it scrubs our insides as it works its way through. This keeps bits of foods from getting stuck in any nooks and crannies, and it also keeps our good bacteria happy and healthy, since insoluble fiber is their favorite food. Now let's talk about a couple of additional nutrition-related considerations specific to young adults. Drunkorexia is a non-medical term for replacing meals with alcohol. Young adults, predominantly college-age adults, have a tendency to combine caloric restriction and binge drinking. These behaviors can occur for a few reasons. One, to avoid weight gain. Two, to increase feelings of intoxication. And three, to save money by purchasing less alcohol for the same effect. Counting calories, skipping meals, and over-exercising are used to compensate for alcohol calories. Treatment for this varies based on specific behaviors, and you can find more information about this in the companion blog post linked below. Another nutrient-related consideration is excess protein intake. Most adults in the U.S. have very little difficulty meeting protein needs, and males ages 19 through 59 are likely consuming way more than their bodies can use. Extra protein can negatively impact the bones, the kidneys, and the liver, and high-protein, high-meat diets have been associated with increased risk of heart disease. 
very high protein diets tend to simultaneously restrict other food groups that are needed to provide those other essential nutrients. So try to consume protein evenly throughout the day to avoid excreting excess and to ensure the body takes in what it needs, especially if engaging in intense exercise. And remember that protein can be found outside of meat, lentils, nuts, beans, whole grains, fish, eggs, dairy, and even some veggies provide alternate sources of protein. Lastly, very high protein diets can be common in a hospital setting as they are often prescribed for the recovery of so many health conditions but they are also temporarily prescribed and under medical care. Many young adults are self-prescribing excess amounts of protein supplementation without considering the associated risks. One last nutrition-related consideration is related to reproduction. The crazy thing about baby making is how important nutrition is for females and males well before pregnancy planning begins. The same adequate and varied diet spoken of regularly in this series can support the health of a mom and dad-to-be. It can also reduce the likelihood of potential deficiencies that can cause problems during pregnancies for mom and baby. Young women are at an increased risk of micronutrient deficiencies, particularly during childbearing years. This is due to a higher micronutrient requirement and multiple food group avoidances. Use of alcohol, drugs, tobacco, caffeine, medications, both over-the-counter and prescribed, herbs and supplements can impact the potential for pregnancy. And a balanced diet can reduce a woman's risk of developing nutrient-related disorders like gestational diabetes and gestational hypertension. Nutrition and lifestyle in males can be just as influential when it comes to pregnancy potential. Malnutrition, zinc deficiency, high fevers, alcohol, drugs, both prescribed and illegal, and smoking can all impact the health of the sperm and potentially damage or destroy sperm depending on the regularity or severity of harmful behaviors. And that about does it. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and have a great day.